Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for stopping by again. Hopefully the uh, lighting isn't too horrible out here. Sometimes I pick some bad times to uh, do some filming. But anyway, today I wanted to do another plant focus on eggplant. Uh, more specifically, the Thai purple ribbed eggplant. They grow to be about softball size. And as you can see, they've got these ribs in them here. Um, and it's just another variety of eggplant you can grow in your garden. Uh, they have this nice deep purple color, uh, although sometimes they even get some kind of like white on them. Um, but more often, uh, most of the ones that I've grown this year all have this deep purple color. Uh, and this is just one of many kinds of uh, varieties of eggplant that you can grow. I was looking up and trying to do some research on this sp specific variety today and when I was looking at the Cornell University website, I was looking up eggplant, they had 169 varieties listed on there. This wasn't even one of them. So there's a lot of different uh, varieties of eggplant that you can choose. I mean, generally in the U.S., we, when we think of eggplant, we know just the Black Beauty eggplant. This is your big purple eggplant, and I use those a lot for different recipes. But in more recent years, I've started growing different varieties just to try some different things. Man, there's all kinds of noise out here today. Um, one thing that I've found is while the uh, Black Beauty eggplant you know, it gets pretty large and you get maybe a couple per plant, two or three is what my experience has been. Um, some of these smaller varieties are way more prolific. You get uh, multiple uh, fruits per plant. I mean, I cut these three off today and I still have just on that one plant out there probably another four or five that are still coming in. And I've planted uh, four of these this year and so I'm expecting to get multiple per plant. They are uh, a little bit slower growing. Uh, these ha were the slowest starting plants in my garden this year. Um, but once they took off, uh, probably about the beginning of July, since then they have really sprouted up and um, just started putting off fruits and, and are just really doing very well. One thing I noticed with this variety, I couldn't find very much information actually I couldn't really find any information on it um, I got these seeds from Baker Creek and the any information that they had on there was that they got the seeds from Thailand um, so I don't know if this is a specific variety to Thailand uh, an heirloom variety because in researching other eggplant they look a lot like some of the varieties that come from Africa um, so maybe it's a hybrid off of like a, you know, from the old trade routes or something. Maybe something got, uh, you know, hyb hybridized, hybrid. I don't know. Maybe it's a hybrid off of an African variety. I really don't know, though. I, I, I couldn't really find any detailed information on the history or, or what of, of this. What I can tell you in growing this is what I have found. Um, so far, I've grown probably about four different varieties of eggplants over the last few years, including Black Beauty and some of the Japanese long purple eggplant, um, is that this variety was not bothered by all the normal insects that I normally have problems with, like flea beetles or potato bugs. Because eggplants are in the same family as tomato plants and um, like potatoes are part of the nightshade family, uh, which is a big um, it, it's a plant that potato bugs are a big fan of. Um, I didn't have a single potato bug on this variety of eggplant. I also almost every year have struggled when I grow eggplant with flea beetles. They, they just you know decimate the leaves. This year no flea beetles. They did not touch my eggplant at all. Um, so if you're looking you know if you like eggplant, you like eggplant flavor this is awesome. Um, you know, they wouldn't necessarily be as good for making like eggplant rolls or maybe even eggplant lasagna, but 
because of their size and, and their shape, they would still be very good in curries and stews and, and even just grilling or, or broiling. Um, but, you know, if, if you like growing eggplant and enjoy the flavor, but have struggled in the past with uh, a pest problem, then this might be a variety that you want to check out because all the pest problems that I've had in the past with eggplant were non-existent this year. And they are some of the, right now, especially now that we're getting towards later summer when a lot of things like blight and, and pest pressure is, is pretty high, um, these haven't been bothered by anything. They're just growing long and strong and putting off a lot of fruit, and I'm pretty happy about that. Um, like I mentioned, there are, I guess really, hundreds of varieties of, of different types of eggplants that you can grow. Uh, it, they, they have a long history. Uh, eggplant was believed to have originated in India, and in a lot of areas in India, they still grow wild. Uh, not this variety in particular, but just eggplant in general. Um, some of the earliest recorded history of eggplant was around 5th century China. Um, there was uh, some writings that said that they used eggplant. Um, ladies of fashion would use eggplant to stain their teeth with. And then when it was polished, it made it look like metal. So I guess that's like uh, the 5th century version of, of having the grill going on. I, I, I don't know. Um, also, uh, in, in ancient China, uh, you know, when a woman got married, her bridal price, when they did dowries and all that sort of thing, uh, what, a part of the bridal price was that she had to have 12 eggplant recipes that she could make. Um, so, you know, it was a pretty popular plant when it comes down to being part of the bridal price in ancient China. Uh, eventually, you know, with the, the trade routes and whatnot, it moved on into Persia and into other countries and, and, and then spread on to, you know, Europe and then, and then the U.S. And, I mean, even Thomas Jefferson is recorded to have um, grown many types of eggplant in uh, his garden. Um, and now, you know, it's, it, it's still part of our cuisine, you know, and, you know the eggplant parmesan and, and uh, breaded and fried eggplant and grilled eggplant and, you know, I can, I can start going on like Forrest Gump here with shrimp, eggplant sandwiches, eggplant, you know, anyway. Uh, so, but coming back to the Thai red purple eggplant. Um, there's a few websites besides Baker Creek that I did find the seed on, so it is available online. Uh, it's, like I said, a, a prolific producer, and it's just kind of a neat looking fruit. You know, it's got the, the ribs going on and, and just kind of a cool looking thing, and uh, you'll get plenty of eggplant. It likes uh, a long, hot growing season. They actually do, we, we had a whole month here of temperatures in you know, mid to high 90s with high humidity, and these things just flourished in that high heat. If you have a shorter growing season in whatever zone that you are in, um, then you might need to start these earlier inside and, uh, you know, to give them enough time to, to fully produce uh, all the fruits that you want to get off of them. I actually always start my eggplant inside. I'm in zone 6B, and I always start my eggplant like around March or April, and, and these I actually started kind of late, and when I brought them out, they had a, a slow start. But like I said, since, since they've um, come July, they, in that high heat, they just blew up, and, and now they're really producing. So I'm ready to go uh, grill these up, I think. These won't work for my eggplant rolls that I make, but um, I love me some eggplant, so I think that these will do well just grilled with some olive oil, salt and pepper, um, or maybe throw them in a curry. So anyway, there you go, eggplant. And this is the Thai purple ribbed or rib purple variety. So try growing some different varieties in your garden. Um, you might be surprised on what works out for your area. So hope you found that helpful or at the very least interesting or slightly entertaining. 
Thanks for stopping by and checking out our channel. Hope you subscribe to our channel and uh, click on the little bell so you don't miss all of our other content. And I hope everything's going well in your gardens, your homesteads, and whatever it is that you might be doing um, with you, your homesteading and growing plans. And I uh, hope to see you again soon. Hope you're having a great day. Namaste.